All right. Is that we're, a test? I'll back a little closer. Okay. All right. Better? No, I hope to not blow everybody's ears out, but you know, every time I sniff now, <laughs> you'll hear everything. Um, it's three minutes till, but I have a tendency to ramble a little bit longer than normal. Uh, so do y'all mind if I just get started? Okay, excellent. All right. Well, first of all, I'm really flattered. <laughs> I came to my thing. Um, I, there's a thing that probably all artists deal with more than anything else, imposter syndrome, and I could give a whole thing on that. So I would lay awake at night going, nobody's going to come. Why would anybody want to come to this thing? So. But, I mean, not for sympathy votes, but I mean, it's just the same thing with, you know, you do your artwork and you love it. You put it, you know, nobody's going to like this. Uh, but uh, anyway, so hi, my name is Scott Thickpen, and I'm a freelance illustrator and animator. I've been in both industries, and I tend to swing in and out of them all the time. I'm from Austin, Texas, and I grew up in small town Alabama. So the twang in my voice is never going away, um, and uh, you'll just have to deal with some southern colloquialisms that I'll give. Um, so I've worked for, oh, also, uh, I, uh, I have my notes here, and my presenter, or my person was going to help me, kind of flaked on me. I now hate her. She's not a friend anymore. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be doing this, so if I look down and have to go, um, for a few minutes, there's a chair right up here if you want to sit down. You're more than welcome. And I met you last night. What was your name again? Monica. Monica. So glad you were able to make it. Yay. Um. So I worked for clients like DreamWorks and Sony and the Wall Street Journal and Snapple and Coca-Cola and Toyota, Harlequin and Penguin Books. I've done a TEDx talk uh, and I've done a bunch of talks over the Southeast as a note that has nothing to do with animation. Uh, I've ridden my, I, I entered a race called the Tour Divide. It's a mountain bike race that starts in Canada and finishes in Mexico and I did that, placed fourth. Uh, that is part of my talk. It'll, you'll, I'll, I'll circle around back to that in just a minute. I worked at a, as a professor at college and uh, taught art and design there, and I married a doctor who just got promoted to chief of staff, so yay. So I want to stop there, what, what, I've, what I've done, and I want you to just think of the narrative you've made for me already. I don't, I don't need anybody to shout it out or anything like that, because I can't wait. I don't want anybody to say, well, you're an asshole, rich guy, which is not the case. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but... I want you to think about the narrative you just made about me and just hold that in your head. And when we're finished, um, there'll be a different narrative possibly. So um, anyway, this is called Am I Too Old to Be Into the Industry? Uh, so let's start with, uh, with let me just kind of, I, I don't want to make this about me, even though I'm going to talk about me a little bit. But I, you know, you may or may not know who I am. So I just want to go through and show you my artwork right quick. Um, I love color and uh, shape based stuff. And uh, I work on a lot of uh, different small animation. Uh, I work in and out of the industry on smaller studios, but also with some bigger ones like Sony and DreamWorks. So this is just some of my work that, um, you know, I, I present around. I want to, uh, I hate when artists will show their like best work and never show some of their earlier work. And so through this, as I'm giving some stuff, I'm going to show some of my earlier not so great work uh, and uh, because I want to humanize me too. There's no reason you need to think that I'm like everything that flows through my hands is just godly. Uh, in fact, it's usually the opposite. Uh, so these are some other things. I, this is some ancient thing called a newspaper. <laughs> some people read them, but I used to work for a lot of newspapers. So. Am I too old for the industry? So let's start first with a show of hands. So I hate, like I said, I hate participation, but I thought back and forth on this. Who in here is trying to break into the animation industry? Okay, those that don't have their hands raised, those are the people you need to tackle afterwards. It's like, get me into the... So, all right, let's go backwards, and I'll try not to end, uh, hurt anybody. So anybody over 40, raise your hand. All right, 30s, 20s. Any teens? I was about to say, get, uh, get out of here. No, just kidding. <laughs> you in particular, I, I'll come up with something uh, that I want to talk about a little bit later, but not, not anything embarrassing whatsoever. So we're, you're, you're here. You're you know, hopeful that you're going to go present your stuff to somebody, and they're like, you're hired. I love you. Uh, uh, you know, congrats. You work for DreamWorks or Disney or Nickelodeon uh, and Sony, whoever's here. So the thing is, Maybe you've made a career change. 
maybe you want to make a career change. Maybe you just hate your current job and you're just like, I just want to get out. And like, do you want in the, out of the industry? So the answer is, am I too old? And the answer is yes. <laughs> All right. Don't, nobody blurt it out. Again, I just want you to hold this in your head. How this makes you feel that I put this word up here? Are you, does it make you angry? Do you like, fuck it, I'm out of this. I, I cuss a lot. I'm really sorry. Uh, I'm out of here. I'm not going to deal with this guy. He's an asshole already. Does it make you want to give up? Does it make you want to double down and go, screw you, I'm going to be the best artist and, you know, I'll show you uh, your yes. Did you get angry at me or did it give you some closure? You're like, oh, thank God, because I didn't think I was going to make this anyway. <laughs> so I'm here to ruin your day for a few minutes. So let's continue to ruin your day. This jerk, six figure artworks by a fifth grader. I mean, we really prize youth in our, uh, in our society right here. So. There's that guy, but hey, there's more. How about this lady? A 12-year-old girl makes 1.6 million in that huge cuss word that came out last year, nifties. Uh, <laughs> we prize youth over wisdom and experience all the time. Um, and uh, my wife, uh, like I said, she's a doc. She's a geriatrician. She works with really old. She, she actually helps. Uh, she works at the VA uh, helping disabled vets. And... Um, and so uh, she works with, as a geriatrician in a palliative care position, she works with a lot of older people. And um, she brought up to me a while back that uh, uh, women in general, as they get older, feel more and more invisible. And that's a shame. And so I have always tried to go, anytime I see somebody that's got a little gray in their hair, I always try to make a point to say hello and smile at them. And uh, it makes people stay, so make sure as the uh, bros say, you should smile more, uh, <laughs> but not that way. Um, so we uh, present youth over age, and thank God this finally has ebbed a little bit, but how many OK Boomer jokes have you heard before? And then how many OK Boomer jokes have you made? Uh, and just so you know, I am not a boomer. I, I am Gen X, and let's review that, please. <laughs> Boomers, Elvis, Gen X, Nirvana. If you don't get the joke, that's <laughs> You're really young. Uh, so, uh, there's some artists I've picked today, but before I want to get back to that, are you too old? And yes, I have no magic here to tell you, but I do want to make it where I can get a little bit of space between this yes uh, here, that you are too old, and maybe we can, maybe, maybe we can squeeze a maybe in there and possibly even a no. Uh, I'm going to give a few tools uh, about it. We will go into some art. Everything I'm about to show has very little to do with animation, uh, the artists I'm about to show, but it's the relevance to age and art. So let me give you some artists to, I want to talk about. When I first started dating my wife, she had this picture hanging up in her house. It cost a hate. And I, it's very simplistic. Uh, there's nothing great about it. It's folk art. And uh, I asked Heather, I was like, who did that? Because it was simple, but folk art's really hard because it's not so much the art and the skill, it's the narrative behind it, which here's your one little spoiler alert. Want to get in the industry, provide a good narrative and you'll, you'll be fine. Uh, so uh, I asked her, I said, who is this? And said, Ruby C. Williams. So I looked her up. She was a folk artist uh, and a very successful one. Her work hangs in the Smithsonian. No, yes, in the Smithsonian. There's another guy, probably had never heard of him, Mose Tolliver, goes by Mose T. Um, also uh, an artist who uh, is a folk artist, great narratives, uh, and he, uh, his work uh, hangs in the MoMA, and his clients are the Obama and Elton, or oh, the Obama, the, uh, the Obama, the Obamas and uh, Elton John are some of the uh, people that buy his work, Brazilians. A familiar face you may know is Grandma Moses, uh, which she has sort of a Mary Blair type of feeling, and again, not much in animation, but we're going to circle around this. Uh, does these beautiful backgrounds. Her work is also in the MoMA, um, our modern museum of art, uh, and it sells Brazilians as well. So what do they all have in common? They have all gone through struggles, and I bet if we had unlimited time and you guys were to tell me your stories, we'd all get to hear some really unique struggles. I'll give you a little bit of information, though, on it. Uh, Ruby... Um, sold her art at a fruit stand uh, and hot sweltering Florida sun and that was uh, how she got started. 
Mose uh, had 1,000 pounds of marble fall on his legs, rendering him useless uh, to be able to do any kind of type of work. And out of boredom, just picked art. Grandma Moses uh, wanted to uh, be an artist, but she was asked to work on the family farm because they had a family of 10. And uh, after that stint, to continue to put food on the table, she worked as a nanny for rich people. So they were all also late bloomers, but we're going to get into that in just a little bit. So um, what's this got to do with, well, you, not me, and getting into the animation industry? And like I said, I would guess every one of us in here has had some form of a struggle, some form of an issue that's blocked you from being an artist. Like for me, I screwed off a bunch as a kid and didn't really, you know, get serious until later on in life. Um, maybe you've started to feel the sting of age. Uh, I'm 49. I'm turning 50 in a few months. So that's fun. Uh, and, but <laughs> we're going to get into that a little bit more. Or maybe you think your, your, your window for animation has passed. Maybe you're just like, ah, it's, it's, it's too late for me. You know, who, who, wants, who wants somebody that's 36 years old uh, or something? So I, I get it. So um, I want to present one other artist uh, to talk about that sort of is important to this show, and that is me. Uh, so there it is, chubby little baby, me. Uh, sadly, the chubbiness has not fallen off at all. Um, and uh, so, like I said, I grew up, I, oh, by the way, uh, back before, I gave you a narrative about me, or I, I told you about that. You formed, it's almost impossible for you to not form a narrative in your head about people, right? It's sort of the don't think of that pink elephant uh, type of uh, thought. So um, you would think I have had a cushy art career and it was a linear line. You know, it's like, I want to be an artist. I'm an artist. Uh, it more goes like a snake. Um, so I grew up in tiny town, Alabama. Uh, I, uh, our, our house was on a dirt road for forever. Um, my graduating class was 150. Uh, your um, your top, let's see, the popular things to do in our town was to ride a truck around a restaurant and drop the G off things. So we loved wrestling, hunting, and fishing. Uh, in that order, I think. So anyway, the tiny town that we were in, there was a slightly bigger town uh, that had a movie theater with two screens. And uh, uh, Mom and Dad took me to go see a movie called The Jungle Book. You might have heard of it. It's kind of good. Um, and I'll never forget, even as a child, uh, I was just floored at what I saw. And it set the bar so high. So much so when I was a kid, you know, we'd have Saturday morning cartoons. And I now I understand, you know, production, you had to move real fast. And I was like, why do these cartoons, why are they so subpar to, like, Jungle Book? You know, that's amazing and stuff. So when I was a kid, I didn't know what that meant, but I wanted to be an animator. Uh, and just like you hear everybody, and you guys have said, I've been drawing since I was a kid. I love art. You should just give me a chance in the animation industry. Same here, same as I thought, except there was no internet really to figure out which way to go. So I, even as a kid, drawing pencil, paper, crayons, you know, even if we went out to a restaurant, I would take mashed potatoes and draw on the side of the wall, un, you know, most of my parents' uh, anger. So by first or second grade, my teachers called my parents and said, your son is very sloppy. He doesn't color in the lines, and uh, we think there's a problem with him. By 16, there's me, a uh, looker, uh, you know, I, just because I was growing up in the South and wrestling was a thing, that's what I wanted to do, except I did the thing that all of us have done, draw people like this. <laughs> Where are the hands? Uh, man, uh, so by the time I'd hit college, I had just given up on uh, art because uh, I grew up listening to people say, well, art is, uh, you, you can't make any money at it. You're a starving artist if you do artist, uh, if any type of thing. And there was a cuss word worse than any F-bomb that I've heard, and it's the L word, and that's lazy. Uh, you know, I would be drawing and, you know, the teachers say, well, he's just being lazy. Or my parents were like, just, you know, I grew up in what's called Protestant work ethic. And so you work until your heart explodes. Um, it's, it's awesome. I love that type of mentality. No breaks, just keep working 27 hours a day. And so um, 
in college, I just was like, I give up. I, I'm, I'm going to go a different route. And so I did. And even when I was taking, my, uh, taking notes in college, all I did was draw the notes. I, and it, I just so yeah, I squeaked by college with a drum roll, please, 1.8 GPA. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I, I embody all of Alabama well. Um, <laughs> But it was enough to get me out of college to graduate and went to grad school, and I hated grad school, and I was just failing. Uh, I, I couldn't, I, you know, my teacher called me and said, hey, you're, you're not doing so hot here. And I was like crying in his office, like, I hate it here. And he's like, he said, look, I know you like art. Just drop out and go be an artist. So I did. Claimed, I'm an artist. Uh, if any of you guys watched uh, The Office when uh, Steve Carell de claimed, I declare bankruptcy. <laughs> That was what I did foolishly. So this was uh, about mid-20s, and I want to try to keep doing timestamps so you kind of know where I'm at on my journey. I'm an artist. I'm going to go to Disney World. I'm going to, you know, or, dis or work for Disney Animation. This is it. This is me. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so I declare myself an artist. The end. Nice to see y'all. Uh, <laughs> except there was one problem. I needed money um, and uh, to pay bills and rent because now I didn't have school to shield me from... Uh, you know, all the real, real world stuff. So uh, things got uh, a little tough. Um, so I worked two dead end jobs uh, at one time a in the mornings. I uh, worked at a vet as a poop scooper. Awesome work. Um, can't say it enough about how much it makes you hate life. Uh, in the evening, I worked the graveyard ship at a coffee shop. At the time, it was called Kinko's. I think FedEx bought it and has engulfed it all and everything. But anyway, I had five roommates, one cat that hated life, and four roaches. Um, and, but I didn't let it deter me. I was like, this is what artists do. They're meant to suffer, you know. Uh, <laughs> I could find better ways to suffer, but anyway, they're, they're, they were meant to, to, to really have to struggle and stuff. So it's okay. So I would draw and draw. And there was internet, kind of. I mean, and, and even if you could get on the internet, you kind of had some information, kind of. Uh, it wasn't the greatest thing ever, and so all I knew at the time was there was a convention in Atlanta where uh, DC Comics was going to be, and I was like, okay, I'll be an animator, but I'm going to go do comics and then move to animation, and that way I'll still do my dream job. So I put together a portfolio, and I marched into the conference, and not only was I told no, I was also mocked and laughed out of it, because it's pretty pitiful uh, uh, portfolio. They could have been nicer, but they were just kind of full of themselves, but that's years ago. So anyway, I went home, the sting of rejection kind of hurt, but I was like, it's no problem. So I decided I would double down my efforts and draw and draw and put together uh, another portfolio. And I, I would ask people, anybody, nobody knew really how to get into the industry because, again, internet was not really a thing. I mean, you know, email, you could email, but nobody really liked it at the time. And, and so I would go to bookstores and I would review everything I could find from, like, uh, how to get into the industry, which was really difficult, and there was not a lot of information about it, but I was able to at least cobble together about 36 different animation studios around the world. So I made 36 portfolios. And since I worked at the coffee shop, I was able to do all this, you know, spiral bound it, you know, and then I put them all in their manila envelope and did a shamanic blessing dance over it. And it's like, please get me hired. So I sent off 36 portfolios, and um, weeks went by, nothing. And then one day I went to my mailbox and there was a manila envelope, mine. And so I was like, oh my God, this is it. So I was, you know, I was like shaking and opened it up and it said no. Um, you know, and I would have wanted another no, another no. 35 no's. Uh, it, it, they would just come in just a little, they would trickle in uh, little by little. Then one day I came in from work and the phone rang and it was Disney. And they said, hey, are you Scott Thigpen? I was like, oh my God, yes, I am. And yes, I'll work for you. And they're like, hey, we received your portfolio. And no. Uh, and they were really sweet about it. And I mean, you know, and, it, and, it, and, and she said, you know, these are some things you can work to, you know, work on, go to the zoo, draw animals, draw people. And I was like, okay, I'll do that. And did I let this break me? Did I let it, uh, uh, crushed my spirit. Did I let it get me down? You are damn right. <laughs> I, did. 
So we're going to go a little dark. Uh, I also had another failure in life, and that is after that, I decided to get in my car with no seatbelt and wrap my phone around a telephone, telephone tree because I just figured at, I think, 26 or 27 years old, life was over, and uh, I couldn't make it as an artist. So I want to put this little promotional thing here. Don't ever harm yourself. And if you do, there's a number called 988. Us artists are a sensitive bunch. I get that. And sometimes it's easy to get down on yourself when it's 3 a.m. You've applied to 100 different jobs and nobody has responded back to you. And you think you're the only person on earth that's suffering. I get it, man. So 988, good stuff for you to remember. And just don't do it. It's not, it's not worth it. Fortunately, after about six million therapy ser sessions and every antidepressant in the world, I got my head screwed on right. <clears throat> but there was a still need for money. <laughs> and I still had to work. And this is as dark as we get. The rest of this is light and funny. So, <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and I was getting work as an artist here and there, little jobs, and let me see how they go. You should be able to identify people like, hey, I'd like for you to do this job for me. Yes. And uh, I'd like for you to draw me a, you know, a tiger wrestling a bear. Yes, and we'll give you credit and exposure. And I'm like, really, how many credits will pay my rent? Well, I should go to the grocery store and say, I'll give you credit if you let me have these groceries. Um, was in my late 20s, and like I said, just barely any work. Uh, so I did more dead-end jobs. Uh, one was working for a cell phone company, a cell phone repair company, way before the iPhone, these were the dumb phones, and they were so dumb that the company, it was called Nextel, if you remember these, yeah, walkie-talkie and phone, and so you'd be at lunch, and there'd be contractors and builders, like, you know, just yelling in their phone, it's like, gee, I really wanted to hear your conversation, and everything you just wanted to say foul-mouthed and stuff, so, um, so I fixed those, and basically it went like this. Um, they would come in, my phone don't work, I don't know what's wrong with it, and I'd take it apart, and this yellow liquid would come out of it, and I would go back and say, sir, did you drop your phone in the toilet? And they were like, no, of course not. And I was like, I'd have to push it to them and say, well, uh, your phone is water damaged, and there's nothing I can do. And them saying, oh, darn, I guess I'll just get a new phone, that got yelled at, because it's obviously my fault that they dropped their phone in the toilet while trying to talk on it. Um, this happened over and over, and there was just one day that I woke up, and I was like, I am so sick of this shit, um, and, uh, you know, I couldn't do it again, but I knew that how tough it was to try to get to the art industry. I mean, all I'd been told was, no, and you're not good enough, and you, you know, you need to fix this and struggle with that, and so it was difficult, but I thought, you know, screw it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try, I, I'm just going to give it my best. So I would wake up at 4 a.m. I'd work till 7 a.m. drawing projects, whatever I could do. Uh, and then I would go to work, and I'd come home, and I would um, work some more on uh, finishing up projects. That's actually a lie. I would wake up about 5.30. I'd worked about 8.30. I'd come in at 9.30. I'd get yelled at my boss for coming in late constantly. And any time anybody wasn't looking, I would dial up on the internet and try to look for everything art. And now we're going to get more into animation type stuff. I would, this is way before MySpace or Facebook or TikTok or anything. There wasn't much of social media on there. But we were starting to see the rise of forums. And I was just flicking along. You know, I'd do a, it wasn't even Google at the time. It's like Ask Jeeves and Lycos. I mean, it was uh, during the, 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 the wars of a uh, search engine. So I saw something one day called the drawing board. And so I was like, huh, that's cool. So I logged on to it, and there were, you know, just thousands of posts here and there. It was so neat to see all these artists posting this artwork. And, I mean, it, it was high-end stuff. So I started um, participating in what's called a drawing jam. And uh, they, would, uh, they would post a scantily clad female. Uh, on Monday, and by Friday, you would draw your interpretation of that scantily clad female. The reason it was that way, the forum was run by Shane Glines. I don't know if you know who he is. He is uh, responsible for um, some of the Batman animated series of the 90s. He also did the first prototypes of Kim Possible. And speaking of Kim Possible, in the drawing board, I met one guy who was uh, uh, work, uh, posting his work. His name was... Stephen Silver, that's right, yeah, him. And also some other guy, 
Bobby Chu. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so a lot of people moved on into high places, so much high places that uh, one day I got a call from somebody. Um, he said, hey, my name's John. Do you remember me from the board? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I remember. He's like, hey, uh, we're working uh, with a company called DreamWorks on Shrek. When we need your skills for something, would you come out? And I'm like, hell yeah, yeah, got it. <laughs> so they flew me out to L.A., and put me in a hotel in Compton, uh, so that was fun. But uh, anyway, my style was born, uh, and I fell in love with shape language, and this is some of my early work right here uh, that I did um, with some of the drawing jams, and we would just have fun. All these are personal projects, um, you know, that I would just kind of draw along, uh, and I kind of just got into it. So this is some of my earlier stuff, but, uh, I had a taste of animation, and it was only just for a six week uh, or no, like two months worth of working there, and it was, it was a lot of fun, it was awesome, and I got done, uh, and I was like, hey, if you guys ever need any work, but I was sort of a niche of uh, what they needed, I was really good in Adobe Illustrator, and uh, they needed that for this certain part of Shrek, but I got to say I worked for Shrek, hooray, and I came home with finally a little bit of confidence that was enough to kind of push me to work harder. So I quit my job, and, uh, and I was like, well, I'm going to do this. Maybe I'll, I'll look for different types of work than animation for now, and I started to poke my head in illustration. Um, the illustration industry and the animation industry, sort of the lines blur really quick. A lot of recruiters will actually go to the illustration industry, especially for children's books, pull people from there and put them into like biz dev and concept. So it's nice to balance that out if you're trying to pick up some supplement work. And so I, I knew that in illustration, you should get an agent. Uh, and again, agents are pretty selective. They're kind of snotty and stuff. And I put together more portfolios and I sent those out. And by now, internet was, we were up to broadband. And I think I was in my early 30s. And uh, I uh, would send off stuff in a course, as you guess, no, 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 uh, we're sorry, you're not what you're looking for. But then one day, an agent called me and said, hey, uh, we're thinking about representing you. Would you be interested? And I was, had learned by this point in time, and here's something, just listen to my words on this. I was like, okay, that's great. Could, could I think about it? And I hung up the phone. Then I jumped up and down and was all excited. But it's good for you to not sound so desperate. <laughs> uh, it'd be like, yes. And here's the reason why. About two hours later, I got another agent that called and said, hey, we really like your work. Would you be interested in working for us? And it's like, well, there's this other agency that's looking at me. And I was able to pit them against each other and get a pretty good deal with that. So... Uh, Things got good. Uh, I got jobs with Snapple, Toyota, Coca-Cola, and the Wall Street Journal was a big one. I even did a book deal. Here's me attempting to be a cool-looking hipster artist in the 30s. If I could go back in time and smack myself, I would. Um, and, uh, but anyway, I was kind of on fire. Um, I, I was getting work left and right. I was married. I had, a, um, I had a life. We traveled a little bit. Things were going okay. I was making money. There was even one year that I was like so close to breaking the six digit mark, you know, and just to kind of let you know that things got good till about 2007, which was something called the housing recession. And I watched all my clients just go, I mean, just, you know, call and say, hey, Tabitha, how's things going? They're like, well, I'm laid off. That's how things are going. Uh, so things got uh, tough. I lost all my clients, and also uh, my wife at the time, uh, we shook hands and walked away from the marriage because it just was not working out very well, and it was better for us to be friends than it was to be married, which left a small little problem when you're freelance, uh, no insurance and uh, no, uh, no steady income or anything, and Unlike today where you hear people belly aching, ain't nobody want to work no more and everybody's hiring. Well, it was the opposite in 2007. Everybody wanted to work and nobody was hiring. Uh, so, I, and also, especially for me, artist was just kind of a luxury at this point in time. So I, uh, um, sorry, sometimes my brain uh, uh, goes Ari for a second. So I uh, was having a lot of trouble finding work, like 
uh, things got tough, uh, really tough. And uh, I found myself not finding anything at all. I had some savings, but it was dwindling quick, like trying to pay for food and, um, and also uh, rent. And so uh, as a side thing, I lived in Atlanta at the time. Everybody has a hobby. One of my hobbies, I, I like to serve. So I would go to a shelter and, uh, and hand out food to uh, the needy and the, see the right, correct word, unhoused. Um, if I say homeless, I don't mean it. And, and I'm, I'm only saying that because words have changed and, and I try to be changed with it. It doesn't really bother me to have to say that. But being Gen X, if I slip up and say something that's, that's sort of old school, I'm sorry. But anyway, I, I would hand out uh, food to the needy and it was also a way I could get a free meal too. And so one day I was talking to the director of the a homeless shelter and I said, hey, uh, do you hire people full time? And they're like, well, we don't really hire people. I was, and they said, but if you want to work full time, we'll give you a room and uh, you know, we'll give you a little bit of a stipend for food. So I was effectively becoming unhoused myself. And right before that, uh, somebody invited me to a party which, by the way, if you guys get to go to any event or party, they're really good to go to and just kind of bump into people and say hello, even as awkward as it is. So I went to this one party and, you know, just kind of chit-chatting with people and accepting my fate that the next few days I was going to be not housed whatsoever except living in a, in a little room. And there was a person there that said, hey, I've seen your work before. Are you, are you still doing art? And I was like, well, yeah, kind of. And it's like, well, I work for uh, the University of Alabama at Birmingham, UAB, and we need a professor to teach art and design. Would you be interested? And I was like, about fainted. Uh, I was like, oh, my God. Yes, 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 I'd be happy to. So I became Professor Scott. Um, here's some of my students that I paid to put nice reviews. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, professor, big salary, notoriety, except there's one little word that I didn't put here, and that's adjunct. Uh, anybody familiar with that name? Uh, that's a cuss word and a half. Adjunct is cannon fodder for you teach all the shit classes that nobody else wants to take or teach, uh, which is usually the 101 classes, um, and you make barely any money. But it was enough to keep my nose uh, out of uh, the water and not completely drowning. But I was still swimming in debt. I still had tons of expenses to deal with. And boy, things were modest for a while. Uh, but things were okay. It's just that it was not enough. And at this time, I'd given up any hope of trying to get into the industry anymore or even the illustration industry because I was tired of getting beat up all the time. So um, Professor Scott, uh, went to the director at, at UAB and said, hey, could I have more money? I'm having trouble affording gas to get to work. And this is 2012, 13. And they were like, well, we're paying you as much as we can. This is back when gas was cheaper, not the craziness that we have today. Um, and so uh, I was having a really hard time. So uh, I saw that there was a startup tech firm in Birmingham. And I was like, I'll just apply to that. And it was to be a coder. And coding for me was pretty much a notch above hell. I actually did this for the Wall Street Journal a million years ago about, uh, you know, how unuser-friendly computers are. So I did this. I, w I went as a coder, and, like, all I ever did every day was, like, type code. And, and, and each day that I did more code, art sort of drained out of me just a little bit more. And I just uh, was sort of floating through life. Things were fine. I'd met somebody, and we were dating, but then we had a bad breakup. And after that, for some reason, that was about 44 um, I was done. I mean, I just didn't have anything else to just get hit again over and over, you know, and it was just kind of tough. So the job provided me enough money to kind of float. Anytime I tried to draw, it was just, there was no creativity whatsoever. I just, I just didn't even give a damn anymore. Um, you know, I was like, ah, I'm just happy doing everything. So I thought, so life was kind of bland. I'd lost, you know, the will to draw and didn't care for much things. And there was one other thing. So I'd been married and I dated somebody. Therefore, I never had to get on a dating app. <laughs> but I was lonely and I wanted to try to find somebody. So I, I was like, I don't know what this is like. Uh, so I got a dating app, uh, one of them. And, you know, when I would look at people of my age, I found that it was quite easy for a man to get a date because people my age would put on their bio, looking for man who can breathe. <laughs> Must have job. I was like, wow, I'm super qualified. So... 
Anyway, I could go on and on about that, but through a fairy tale um, uh, meeting, I met my now wife, uh, Heather, and uh, we've been happy for about five years, and things are going great. Um, and this is where I kind of want to go a little bit further into animation. So H Heather saw how much I was struggling with code. Like, I'd go home to try to learn this crap, and, you know, I'd be typing in and screaming and yelling at the computer. And Heather said, hey, you know, I've seen your work before, and isn't there something called Inktober? And I was like, yeah. She's like, that's coming up. Would you draw Inktober for me? And I was like, I guess. She's like, well, draw cats. And because uh, she's a crazy cat lady. And when I met her, she had three cats. She was terrified that I wasn't going to want to go out with her because of all that. So I did Inktober. And uh, this is what I want to tell you. I know it says June 1st. I have no idea why I put that. But um, it was really embarrassing to put this picture up here because I'm really terrible with ink. <laughs> so I did 31 uh, cats. And here's the side. Anybody done Inktober? Uh, so I had this deal of, yeah, I'm going to get tons of hits and likes and follows, and I think I got more unfollows and people saying you suck. <laughs> the worst was I, I switched over to digital because I hated the way I, this worked, and somebody posted, you can't do that, like they were the Inktober police. And it was like, <laughs> has to be ink. So I'm not like bosom buddies with Jake Parker who studied, started it, but I, I have chatted with Jake, and, um, and, I, and you know, I told him about this, and he's like, yeah, that's why I hate Inktober. <laughs> so uh, anyway... Um, I was drawing these, and I guess I did stay with it, and that's the big thing, guys. It's not so much to do Inktober once or twice, but the whole thing is to stick with it, even if they're just shit drawings. Just go ahead and get them on paper, because that's going to be consistency is where you just show up over and over, and even though your pictures may look like crap, sometimes you learn a lot from that. Um, so just about day 28 or 29 I was drawing, and it just hit me. I really wanted to be an animator. And I'm 44 at this time. I really want to work in the animation uh, industry. I don't want to be an animator ever. Uh, yeah, like the thought of keyframes, oh my God. Uh, so um, my wife said, hey, I know you hate this. I know you hate coding. She's like, please just quit. You, we'll give you, what if we give you two years to, to get into the animation industry? And after that, if you don't make it, we'll figure out something, you know, for you to do. And I was like, hey, Heather, your dream come true. So I quit. Um, so for two years, about 60 plus hour weeks, I spent my time with mentors and YouTube classes, and workshops, and figure drawing studies, and worked with fellow artists and met artists and chit chatted up till two, three in the morning with people on Instagram DM about their different stuff. And I would practice over and over, I did one series where I just did an apple a day just to see how much I could draw one boring, mundane apple and make it cool. And I would do this over and over. And I would get little jobs here and there, like somebody called me and say, hey, listen, I'm pitching a pilot. Would you do some biz dev for us? I'm like, sure, yeah. Then I got a call from uh, you know this one guy just out of the blue said, hey, I was surfing along and I saw your website would you work for this game company? I'm like, yeah, of course I'd work for this game company. And you know, when I meet the art director, and he would know a few people here and there. Um, and then one day, six months ago, guys, so I'm catching you guys up, I get an email that said, hey, this is Sony. Uh, we need a key color artist, and we're interested in hiring you. Would you be willing to work under Scott Wills and Jindy? I'm assuming I don't need to say Jindy's full name, but if I do, Jindy did the great. Jindy and Scott just finished up Primal, which is, if you had, okay, good. No, it's unbelievable. In season two, I got to see part of it. It was awesome. Uh, then, uh, and also Samurai Jack and uh, Dexter's Laboratory, and the best ever Clone Wars, Star Wars 2D cartoon ever. Yeah. So um, I got to work under them, and it was, and so I was like jumping up and down, and my wife came home, and she thought I was just, had gone nuts and I was like I got a job with so Sony Sony and so she's jumping up and down and we celebrated and um and so finally I'm in the industry things are going my way it only took four decades to get there but you know who's counting um so we celebrated and uh like I said in uh, you know a mountain bike uh, I used to mountain bike a bunch I don't do anymore and, and uh mountain biking means you're in the mountains Mountains means rocks. Rocks hit your wheel. Sometimes you fly off your bike if you're stupid like me going fast. And I flew off my bike one time a long time ago and broke my clavicle. So now anytime the weather changes, I get to feel everything through this arm. 
So I went on a bike ride the next day. Things were going fine. I was like, ha ha, you know, like I was riding through. People was like, animator, work for Sony. <laughs> yeah, not the Spider-Verse, but pretty close. So, <laughs> and, uh, and so I was all excited. I came home, and I took a shower, and I got out, and my arm was bothering me again. And Heather came home. She's like, what's wrong? I was like, I don't know. My arm's bothering me. So my doctor wife looks up, bursitis and tendonitis, and I'm like, Damn it, can't get this stupid arm to, you know, usually I can do a stretch and it's fine. While she's looking it out, I start getting kind of green and nauseated. And I was like, well, did I eat anything, you know, uh, did I drop, you know, food on the ground and go, eh, 10 second rule and get some kind of bug or something. And then there was the feeling of a wet towel uh, heavy on my chest. And if you don't know where this is going, it's going where you think it is. I was having a heart attack. Uh, and I told Heather, I was like, oh, I think I'm having chest pains. So she, we went to the hospital and, uh, yep, was having a heart attack. And so was I like, oh, my God, Heather, please don't leave me in this dying time. Or what are my friends and family going to think or anything like that? And I was like, fuck no. I was like, please leave, live until you get to work for Sony <laughs> just for this one time. Like, screw my wife. I want to work for Sony. This has been a lifelong dream. And uh, so... It was very fun trying to facilitate uh, working for Sony with 100,000 wires hooked up to you, you know, and stuff beeping and everything, but you do what you can do. But anyway, I don't want to dwell on this. I got a stint in my heart. I'm fine. I'm alive. Hopefully, I'll be alive tomorrow, um, but, you know, that happens. So that's me, and let's stop for a moment and think about that narrative you had about me beforehand, uh, and that's what I wanted to let you guys know. Things go like that now. Let's stop that and talk about you uh, and you getting into art. And the one thing that we can't escape ever, age. This is why I'm popular. Because nobody, like you're not going like, God, I woke up and I just got younger today. Um, <laughs> you can't escape death and you're not going to escape age. Uh, I wake up in the morning now and have to push my face back together. And uh, there's just a little, little bit of my black left in my beard. I had thought about coloring it, but I didn't want to be that guy that did that. <laughs> You know, hey, yo, kids, I'm hip. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm older now. I have some thoughts, and I wanted to pass them along to you as some tools. First of all, like I said, I have no magic wand. I have no, if you put this in your portfolio, you're going to get hired. Um, I, I don't have any of that for you, so if you want to leave now, I understand. Um, so I wish I could get, I could wave a wand, resurrect Disney, and he hires us if we all work in the industry under on the next blockbuster movie. Actually, I hope you s somehow get to be a top dog and start uh, your own animation company that dominates the world. And when you do, please know I do background design and character <laughs> design. <laughs> I'm for hire. Um, I, I like freelance. I, 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 I'm, I, I don't like working for the man. I, I like working for the man for about six weeks until I hate everybody and I leave. Um, so... So like I said, age is scary. None of us are getting out of it. Um, and, you know, if, if I could say anything, you want in the industry, there are two things you need to do. Hard-ass work and education. Uh, and education's free. Go on YouTube. There are 850 gabillion videos, and some of them are kind of hard to follow. Like there's been some times I'm, I, I try to learn Blender, and uh, I'll log on and be like, how do you do this in Blender? And, you know, then... You get on YouTube, and it's like, what's up, guys? Smash this bell, and here's this 800-minute <laughs> video. And, or it's either a very, um, I, I, I'm not knocking this. It's the only way I think of be able to put it, a very Slavic accent with uh, techno music going, yeah, you like to, to, to do this. And, you know, like, what did you say? How did, I just want to know how to do this thing. Um, but uh, anyway, there's a lot of better education now and hard work. Those are the two things that are going to get you in the industry, period. Um, so, but it's stressful and it's hard and you're going to get rejects and you're going to have that night where nobody has responded to your contacts. It just happens. Um, and, uh, another thing, whoops, uh, let me get back to that. Another, I'm going to get to, I'm going to get to that in just a minute. Uh, the two other things, aging is scary because right now at this very moment, somebody see you, you'll, um, somebody is birthing a baby that is going to draw circles around you. There are 20-year-old artists that I worked with, and I'm like, holy hell, how are you doing this? And that quick. Uh, another thing is, which I meant to bring up, is uh, now uh, we have a new child to deal with, and that is 
Dali uh, or uh, the artificial intelligence. I did this in 30 seconds. I wrote Castle Sunset John Singer Sargent and it popped this out. This has a, a, a chance to really threaten biz dev and concept artists. If an art director and a producer that's strapped for cash already can eliminate this job, my job, um, well, you, this is scary. This is, uh, I mean, actually, it's kind of frightening. I love playing around with it, but, you know, this is Dolly at its infancy. What's going to happen like 10 years from now? And where are you going to be in 10 years? I can tell you we're going to be in 10 years. You're going to be dealing with drooping eyes and everything unless you go get shoved full of Botox. What about, what about my face? Oh, and the other thing is when I get stressed out, here's your best thing to do. When you get stressed out and you feel inadequate and you're like, I'm going to suck, the best thing you can do is doom scroll Instagram. And then you find somebody, kid, that says, yeah, speed painting on my lunch, just got my 15th birthday, got hired by Netflix, will it, lifelong dream. <laughs> Whee! 950 zillion likes. <laughs> I post something, and I'm like, I worked months for this, and I get 16 people unfollowing me, or I get that one spam saying, you know, DM me for art or whatever. <laughs> what about this little shit? Um, so just to kind of put this in your head, this is... This kid is going to be, you know, like, I mean, he's already can buy a PlayStation. Um, and <laughs> so um, when I'm facing anxiety, doom scrolling, worried if AI is going to join my, uh, take my job, I've found I want to bring some tools to you that have helped me. And when I bring them up, you're going to be like, really? That's what you have? But just hear me out, please. Uh, so the one thing that helps me more than anything else it's free, and, and also I hate when people like try to sell shit to you, so this is like all free. Um, this is free, and it doesn't cost anything, and that is being present. Now, if all of you just looked at this and like, really, this is it? This is where I'm going? Let me tell you, this little word right here is harder than any art project I've ever done. I've worked months on background stuff, and being present is one of the hardest things ever. Let me explain the simplicity and complexity of that for you. Uh, you want to be here in your future as uh, working in the industry. Definitely don't want to fall in the past to have to work something you want. Those things that would help your career, do those things. Those things that don't help your career, don't do those things. Now, you're probably thinking, yes, asshole, I know this. <laughs> I'm not stupid. I know how to do this. But let me tell you about this. Something that would help you with your career. You go out there, you see an art director at DreamWorks. You are nervous as hell with your portfolio and you go and you put it down and say, would you review my portfolio? And the art director looks at it and says, holy shit, we've been looking for somebody like you forever. You're hired. Simple, it moved your career forward. Here's another one. Tonight, you go to the exclusive party. You sneak into the exclusive art party with all the cool art people. Uh, and uh, you go in and you're, you know, it's like now there's free alcohol, so you just chug all night long. You get really drunk, and the next day, you're s tomorrow, you're so hungover, you can't come to anything because you're too busy throwing up in the shower. That's a negative. That moves you backwards. I've been on both sides of the coin of that. <laughs> uh, so I've had to really temper myself and make sure that I don't go to the super cool party. Um, so it, being present is simple but hard. It's really hard to do the right thing sometimes for yourself. Now, I'm not talking about the morally right thing. I'm talking about having the courage to go up to somebody and go, hey, my name's Carol, and uh, I'm a his dev. Would you look at my uh, art? Could you give me some feedback? That's scary shit to do, guys. I mean, it is, but just remember, everybody in here puts their pants on one leg at a time. Um, well, I guess if you're a girl, you put your dress on both legs at a time, but, um, and, and some guys. Uh, and so uh, it, uh, it's, it, it's, it, we're all the same. I, I mean, I hope you've not kind of put me on a pedestal here just because I'm up here. I've been in crowds for all my life, and I, will, I mean, I'm excited to go sit and listen to people as well. So, um, you know, you, you have, uh, even if it's a director or producer, they're still just people, um, and it's okay to walk up to them. Be your confident, cool self when you go that way. But those are positives. Negatives, that will do that. Self-doubt, um, sabotaging yourself, comparing yourself on Instagram. I mean, I could say, let's see a show of hands, but I guarantee you somewhere you've done that. And, you know, comparison's the thief of joy. I, I mean, I, I've drawn work that I'm so excited about, and I post it, and it gets like one like, and I see some other stuff, and I'm like, I'm never going to draw that good. Um, 
And uh, are y'all familiar with Lois? Uh, she's got a good mental health uh, one. Lois is the same way. She gets on there. She's got over 2 million followers, and she's looked at work and go, geez, I'll never draw that well. So we all suffer with that. But anyway, negatives, positives, very easy. But making intentional decisions um, is going to help you more than anything else. Um, there's another part about being present. <clears throat> this is as close as I could get to an image I wanted to do. When you're frazzled, when you're scared, when you're nervous, when you're anxious, another part of being present is not taking those feelings and adding a judgment or a value to it. Like, oh, the universe is telling me this. Oh, it's because I cut that guy off. Now karma is coming back to get you. More about being present when you need a moment, and this is why I'm talking about softening that yes with the quotes around it, that yes, you're too old. I like to think about being in a mountain. This is close. I could get to a mountain. I, I wasn't about to draw another piece. Um, above the hilltops, above the clouds, it's quiet. There's a soft breeze. There's clinging in the air of maybe some bells. And I'm able to just for a few seconds have that image in my head where it softens the sting, the sharp sting of age. Sometimes, just sometimes, it gives me an answer to a question I needed. Not all the time, and there's no magic to this. I'm just pressing pause in my brain. If you think about it, like, you know, you guys are going to go to a portfolio review or you're going to see somebody's artwork that they're holding and it's going to be really good and you're like, oh, I'm never going to be that good. I should just go home. And uh, a lot of times you just pause. I can't give you any magic answer, but in your head, you may come up with an answer that you needed uh, at that time. See, it doesn't always work. Uh, yeah, and I want to make it clear. I stress out really quick, and I get nervous really quick, and I fail at being present a lot, a whole bunch. So it's not something that I'm a god or a guru, but I have uh, been able to get better and better of just kind of going, okay, I'm just going to be quiet a little bit. I'm going to go up on my mountaintop. I'm going to sit and just relax, and, and then when I come down or I come back to here, I'm okay. Um, so I had something to say, and I forgot, and I hate that, but... Um, so I'll get back to that in a minute. I'll say, oh, yeah, that. Um, but this doesn't answer a question uh, is if you're too old to be an artist. You know, it, 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 I know that I haven't answered that question, and I won't answer that question. That's for you to answer. First of all, what is old? And this is where I'll come to you. When I was 18 and I looked at 15-year-olds, I felt old to a 15-year-old. When I was 23 and I looked at an 18-year-old, I was like, well, that's just a fetus. Um, <laughs> 23, I'm an old man now. What is this creak in my back or something? 30, to, uh, when I was 30, a 20-year-old seemed, uh, you know, uh, uh, very young. When I was 40, I felt like a biblical figure. Um, <laughs> now at 49, apathy's creeping in and I lose train of thought, so everything's on the up and up as far as I can remember. Um, <laughs> So you want to start a new career. It's scary. There's a lot of things that you have to worry about. Bills, insurance, and stuff like that. That's for you to figure out. Sorry, I don't have any answers for that. But I do have some thoughts. Um, are, you, are you too old to be in the industry? I uh, kind of got ahead on my slide. Sorry about that. That was all. That's, these are all of my notes I just said. So let's revisit some artists. Most Tolliver. Montgomery, Alabama. Folk artist, hung his, uh, got uh, 1,000 marbles, crushed his legs. Out of boredom, he picked up art uh, because he had nothing else to do. He showed, he hung his art in trees in a dusty old road in Alabama and was discovered and, like I said, now hangs in the MoMA and the Met, the Obamas and Elton John by his work. He started his career at 46. What about Ruby? Ruby... Uh, was from a slave free, uh, freed slave uh, community called Billsville, Florida. Her great grandmother was one of those one that started it. Sold her work at a uh, produce and fruit stand in the hot sweltering sun to uh, supplement her work. She was also an evangelical minister, and she started her career at 50. What about these cats? Van Gogh, uh, Monet, and Cezanne. Uh, when did they get their start? Early tw or late 20s and late 30s. So 
those are some artists, but wait, other people have been through this, and I wanted to bring up some, uh, let's go travel to that magical place called Hogwarts. <laughs> uh, now, I just realized on my slide that uh, the fonts have shifted, so I apologize. Snape, uh, Alan Rigman, uh, first got his start on Die Hard, the best Christmas movie ever. <laughs> 46, sorry the, the mess up. So let's go to Scranton, PA. If you are not a fan of The Office, you're dead to me and leave now. Uh, <clears throat> Jenna Fisher uh, got her start, 31. But what about New Mexico where the guy who knocks? Heisenberg. Uh, Brian Cranston got his start at 44. One of my all-time favorite actors, Morgan Freeman, didn't get his start till 52. And what about the foul-mouthed man who's now a universe, or Marvel Universe character? That's right. Samuel L. Jackson got his start at 45. Scoundrel from a Galaxy long, long ago. Harrison Ford got his start at 33. And what about Grandma Moses? She was named Grandma Moses for a reason, not just because she was, you know, matronly or anything. Got her start at 76 years old. Um, so I hope this brings you some peace. Um, I hope it gives you some inspiration to never give up. I've got a couple of more tools I want to give you, and then we'll wrap this little talk up. Even if you have to deal with rapid tech, and it's going to continue to get faster and faster, uh, and, uh, and even though there's younger people that draw faster than you, it's difficult to be an artist. It's also difficult to age and be an artist. I like to think of it this way. I see this all the time, and I think it's so cool on Instagram. People put their age, and they put like level 32, and I'm like, oh yeah, man, level 49? I'm kicking ass and taking names. And if you want to take that analogy with computer stuff, you can, you can say you're adding uh, experience points to X things like, you know, I want to invest in power, but instead you invested in, you know, biz dev or background art or modeling or rigging, whatever is your, uh, you know, du jour. And it's good to, to, um, it's good to uh, explore those different things right now because when you do get in the industry, kiss your free time goodbye. Um, so there's one last tool I want to give you that's helped me more than anything else. Uh, it's also free. Uh, you don't need an app, subscription, or anything. And it is in this room. Uh, and that is your fellow artists uh, that are in here. So if you see, I, I can't tell you through all my life, the one thing that has got me through anything else has been um, people. Uh, my fellow artist, and they will help you more than anything else. I uh, sadly most of mine in here, but I'm going to recognize a few people in a minute. Um, the 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 people you are around, the way you treat them with empathy and kindness will come back to you. Do the thing, be nice to people, be kind to people because you are a good human. But empathy has a way of coming back so much tenfold. Um, I have my friends. I've gotten to talk to them at night about you know. When you're feeling down, you just got that next reject. Uh, a lot of times, your friend will look at something from an ob you know an objective point of view. When you're just in the muck of everything, um, they can get you job opportunities. They can pr provide you uh, you know comfort when you need it, and really harsh, honest critiques when you don't want to hear it. And that is uh, that is invaluable and free and you're at lightbox so there are tons of artists here maybe they aren't in the industry or maybe they're not working with dreamworks but there are nowadays there's hundreds and hundreds of game companies and uh, animation studios and illustration i can't stress enough illustration you can make money there um, and so these are people you should network network with there's a few people in here too that have been some friends of mine i'm I want to bring them up, I want to recognize them, or not up here, but I want to recognize them. But I don't want, like, it. I've been to Lightbox before, and, you know, and, and there'll be said animator up here that I'm like, oh, my God, him, and he's, like, talking to his buddies, and you're just like, oh, I'm never going to be in the cool kids club. That's not it. These are just friends of mine that have meant something to me. So if you're in here and you're some of these people, would... Uh, Eunice Marcy, Colin Camille, Eula, Lisa Lip, Dave, Dawn, Ann, Michael, other Michael, uh, Heather, Gabby, Mako, Arena, Aaron, Mylene, Dan, Ty, Brandon, and God, I hope I didn't forget anybody. If you feel comfortable, do you mind standing up? <laughs> Yay. So 
they're the reason that I'm up here. Okay, you guys sit down. Uh, and uh, they're, they are why I'm here. Most, most of my friends that came are assholes and they didn't come to my th just kidding. I told they were like, we really want to come to your thing. I was like, go, go do your thing. Um, so uh, these, are, these two that were here, um, they, I, it's, I, I know I'm tripping over my words. I can't tell you the, if it wasn't for them, I'm not here. I wouldn't have been working for Sony. I wouldn't be work. Uh, you know, over the years, I wouldn't be working for DreamWorks. Same with like Steven Silver. I'm not like buddies with them or anything. I mean, we talk and stuff, but you know, I met him when he was just learning, you know, the ropes of the art. Same with Bobby Chu. And these things, when you are kind to people, when you just, when you're yourself, you know, it comes back. It helps you out. Even at this age, uh, it's okay. So I want to leave you with this, this quote that uh, I was told as a young illustrator, and it's by Kevin Coolidge, and I have lived and died by this quote, and I'll read it, and I'll just put it up. But nothing can, uh, in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts, and persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan, press on, has solved and always solved the problems of the human race. May your art careers age like fine wine and get sweeter and richer as time go by. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>